structures and tectonics. Uh, and um, uh, sorry, I have lost my. <laughs> um, and um, I have transformed the structures courses in our uh, university into tectonics of structures courses. So that was a major attempt. And um, after that, uh, I transformed that uh, those courses, there were three courses and I transformed them uh, into a book and it was published by Taylor and Francis Rodledge. So uh, I can say that uh, I'm uh, quite well equipped on this subject. Uh, and uh, I am one of the co-editors of uh, Open House International. Uh, I have many publications, uh, national and international, and my research areas are mainly tectonics of structural systems, tectonics generally, and uh, architectural research, uh, academic architectural research, I mean, and uh, uh, ethics, architecture and ethics. Uh, so these are the major subjects that I study. Now, first, before starting to make my presentation, I must say that this is a very dynamic subject. Uh, what I have heard from my teachers uh, about this subject has been totally changed. You will see something totally different than that. Because uh, technology, uh, not only technology, not only materials, uh, the politics and economics and the need of representation of people uh, have been changed a lot. Uh, so this directly reflects to architecture and this directly reflects to building technology because Building technology is a very, uh, I, I believe, especially when the large buildings are considered, large structures are considered, is a very uh, major part of uh, architectural language. Not only the drawing, but the structures and te technology uh, go into that language so that if you know uh, how to draw and how, if you know the materials and if you know the structures, and construction systems, then you can use that language uh, in design in a better way. So um, uh, my, my presentation starts with uh, Pompidou Center photograph because I, I believe uh, it is one of the very important uh, buildings uh, which really relates uh, structures to uh, architecture and tectonics, I mean. So uh, we have a very special structure there, and uh, this structure contributes a lot uh, to architectural idea, and it's a long span uh, structure. Uh, so I prefer to start uh, with this building. So now I will carry on. My presentation will take approximately one hour. I, I rehearsed it last night. So let's see. Uh, so um, this is the content of my presentation. First, I will start uh, presenting about the problem of long span. What does it mean, long span? So to start with that, we have to know what is span and uh, what does it cause as a problem, which is known as the problem of moment, actually, because uh, if you have long span, you have very high moment. Uh, in terms of uh, forces, uh, internal forces, I mean. And then this causes uh, a need for different structural systems. So we are going to talk how this happens, what are the reasons behind this. And then I will try to uh, present you the solutions to this problem of moment so that once you understand these solutions, there are actually, I, I will talk mainly about three basic solutions um, and it's all related to form and because form is very much related to uh, stress type. Uh, so I will start with that and then I will start presenting these three solutions. I call one of them uh, compression structures. So if you design compression structures, you can have a long span structure economically. 
And uh, tensile structures is the second solution. And the third solution is compression plus tension structures. Now, this means in some elements you have compression, in some other elements you have tension. So these are the basic responses to the problem of moment. But of course, um, uh, we shall also talk about other things. I, I want to also say a few things about long span bending structures. And then I will say a few things about long span cantilevers. You know, a cantilever is a, is a, beams are usually supported from two sides, but a cantilever is supported from one side only. So uh, we are going to talk about that as well. Now, first, what is span and how do we, how do we use span? Now here again, this is uh, Pompidou Center. If you look at the left top corner, you can see a plan of it. And I signed, uh, I hope I signed them correctly, but yeah, it, it reflects my idea to you. But uh, I signed the columns with red. Uh, so as you see, uh, there, are, there are some axes of uh, trusses and under it, you can see the section of the building uh, and you can see the trusses spanning between uh, two supports. Now, I, I would again ask you to concentrate on the plan. As you see, I signed the main span there. So that is the length of the truss. It is also seen in the section. So that's the main span. And that's the, uh, you know, it creates the uh, internal space without any columns. And then uh, we put these axes quite close to each other. You know, we don't make, uh, let's say, we don't have one main span in one direction and the same main span in the other direction. We put them closer to each other. So here, as you see, the main span is the length of the main structural element. So I'm going further. Uh, if you have questions, you may stop and ask. Uh, I may, if I won't hear, please warn me. And here, uh, uh, this slide explains why do we need uh, different structures. Uh, on the right side, you see a reinforced concrete frame under construction. And as you see, uh, the length of the beam is 10 meters and the depth of the beam is expected to be around one meter, maybe slightly less. But if I multiply all dimensions of this beam with 10 to achieve a 100 meters long beam, and it will be 10 meters deep then, and three meters wide, this will not work. So don't think that if you get a structure uh, and multiply all its dimensions with the same value, it might work. That's, that's the wrong way of thinking. And there is a big reason behind this. So here, uh, I can tell you that after 15 or 20 meters of span, we start searching for other structural systems. And uh, the main reason is this problem that I'm going to explain in a minute. What is the problem behind this uh, wrong um, attitude, let's say, why it is not possible to multiply all dimensions with the same value the long span structure. Why it's not going? <laughs> huh. uh, and here, uh, here is the explanation. Uh, if you look at the top left side, you can see this also in nature. Uh, the larger uh, creatures in nature have thicker uh, structural parts in their bodies and the smaller creatures have thinner structural parts in their bodies. Look at the mosquito's legs and look at the legs of the elephant. So uh, now we are going to go into the reasons uh, behind this. The main reason behind this issue on the right side you can see a beam and the moment diagram of it. Uh, 
now it's all about moment. And the main reason behind this problem is uh, if you increase if you increase span 10 times, moment increases a hundred times at least. So this, this is not proportional. So if you take the mosquito and make it a hundred times bigger, it cannot fly, it cannot walk, it will just flatten on the ground and it won't work. So uh, it's because of this. So if we increase spawn 10 times, moment increases 10 times 10, proportional to the square of it. So that's the problem to struggle with. So I will try to uh, describe the solutions to this. But before that, I want to say a few words about what can we do if the span is not long? On the right side, uh, I won't go into this into detail, but uh, I will just uh, show you two examples. On one side, we have a reinforced concrete waffle slab, which can span 15 to 15 meters. When I was a student, it was 10 to 10. Now it is 15 to 15 because of concrete quality. And on the right side, you can see a steel frame, which can span up to uh, 20 meters in buildings, but in other structures, they can span much longer. But again, as you see, uh, the waffle slab has a square form without any columns, but the steel frame has rather rectangular parts uh, between the uh, frame elements because they are placed closer. That's the reason behind that, that we are having these secondary structural elements uh, between the mainframe elements. That's the reason that we have to place them closer to each other. So let's go further. Now we are going into uh, long span structures. Uh, we can have pre-tensioning, we can have uh, post-tensioning, uh, if we use these, span can increase a little bit with steel frames and reinforced concrete frames, and the depth of the elements can be reduced slightly, but uh, that is not the main solution to the uh, problem of moment. Now, the uh, solution to the problem, now I'm going to state the problem, uh, solution to the problem. Solution to the problem is to transform moment into tension and compression. So to avoid moment, we have to get rid of moment and we have to trans make the structure work either with tension or with compression or both of them. So uh, on the uh, figures, you can see that um, uh, Axial forces like tension and compression produce linear stress distribution, while bending moment creates different type of stress distribution. This also contributes to the problem of moment. Now the solutions. I'm going to sketch out, this is a very schematic explanation of the solution, but this is the very basic idea behind this. Rather than memorizing what are the structural types, knowing what is the solution in a schematic way is, uh, I believe, is very good. Now, the first, uh, at the top left, you can see the main solutions in red. I draw them with red. One solution, the first solution, is to have a positive form looking downwards. The second solution is to have a negative form looking upwards like this. And the third solution is triangulation. So it's very much related to form, you see? So if we have this type of approach to form, then the stress type will be changed. Bending moment will be changed into either tension or compression. So let's go into it a little bit further. Um, in, uh, on, if you look at the right side of the screen, you will see one, two, three solutions. The first one is compression structures with positive forms. It's not only the curved form. It depends on the loading. We are going to see that in a minute, but you can have a triangular looking down. These are all related to gravity issues. 
And depending on the loading, a positive form, any positive form, uh, I think uh, maybe I should reduce my view like this. Huh? Maybe you can see better now, I believe. Uh, and the second solution is tensile structures having negative form looking upwards. Uh, we are going to see what changes the options between these forms in a minute. And the third possibility is compression and tension structures with triangulation. If you form triangles, the whole structure is transformed into, um, it, they start working with tension or compression. So these, these solutions create much lighter, much more effective structures. And it becomes possible to span uh, for compression structures. The, there are different types in it. We are going to see them in a minute. But um, if you have a positive curved uh, shell, you can achieve 240 meters. And uh, if you have... Uh, uh, if you have um, tensile structures uh, and if you have um, negative curves, negative forms, I mean, then uh, a suspension bridge, for example, can span up to 2,000 meters. Now, the compression structures 250 meters with tensile structures 2,000 meters. And with compression and tension structures, if we, if we have some 3D trusses spanning uh, around 500 meters, so that the span capacity increases a lot. Of course, in architecture, uh, we don't uh, usually use such large spans, but we use these structures in architecture. We are going to see some examples. Now, uh, I will now go into the detail of this issue a little bit. Uh, and I will start telling you uh, what determines the form of the positive form. So yes, I have a positive form, but will it be a, a semicircular form? Will it be a parabolic form? Will it be a triangular form? Will it have another form? So what determines that? Actually, it's very interesting that it is the form of the moment diagram, which is the best form. So I don't know if you have learned about uh, drawing moment diagrams, but here on the left side, as you see, if you have uh, two forces uh, downwards on a beam and we have a shear diagram and underneath it, we have a moment diagram. So the form of that moment diagram gives us the best form. So if you take that form, then uh, you can achieve um, uh, compression or tension totally and get rid of moment. If you use that form, you will get rid of moment. So uh, if you look at the left top side uh, of my presentation, if you use the form of the moment diagram as it is, it is the best form for the compression structures, which makes moment zero. And the whole structure starts working with compression. And if you, if you use the opposite of the form of moment diagram, then uh, you reach the best form for tensile structures for the same loading. So here, of course, there are some, uh, there are some uh, courses on this subject. People go to master's courses to learn how to design the best form in engineering, especially. So we cannot go into this that much, but I will try to tell you that there, this is not that simple, actually. Uh, there are some complicated issues and the most important complication arises because of the depth of the structure. So we know the form approximately, but how deep should it be? Because I can have a uh, shallower form, I can have a uh, more steep form. So what determines that? Actually, if we go through the examples, you can see that the depth is uh, usually span divided by three. So that might help you. Actually, I'm trying to help you somehow in your designs. 
So uh, I will talk about uh, three concepts of economy. Uh, there is always, when we talk about structures, there is always a concept of economic span limits. But today we are living in another economic environment. We are living in uh, neoliberalism or liberalism, whatever you call it, uh, in certain uh, times and with certain people, they want to spend money, you know, they don't want to be economic. But still in design, whatever the economic approach to buildings, uh, while designing, it is good to refer to economic limits because you can explain yourself as a designer with respect to economic limits. You can go out of it, but it's you should know the economic limit and economic form. Then, uh, like what Zaha did, did for example, then uh, you can uh, use a form closer to the economic form and you can uh, use the span according to that and you can uh, talk about it. Otherwise, you cannot talk about it. You cannot explain yourself and nobody will prefer your design. So there is also a concept of range of span. So we have a... Uh, all the structures we are going to see, they are used for uh, sometimes for smaller structures, but there is an economic upper limit and they are used beyond the economic limit as well. So if you look at the examples, it's possible to go under it and it's possible to go above it. There is also, you can also look for these systems uh, to see the maximum span. So I will try to show you the tectonic examples as well. So now we are going into it. So this is the first group, the positively positive forms. In this uh, group, we have arches, vault stones, geodesic domes, grid shells. And as you see on the right side, um, there are two problems of these structures. One is the horizontal force problem. The other is the buckling problem. Now, horizontal force problem is a little bit explained here. If you look at the middle bottom uh, photograph, there are arches there, steel arches. These are elementary compression structures now. There are also surface compression structures. These are elementary. So as you see, those arches, when they sit on the columns, they apply horizontal forces to the columns. So those forces have to be supported. This is the main problem of this group of structures. Uh, and if you look at the bottom left, you can see the dome of Reichstag, German parliament building. And there also, there are horizontal forces at the bottom so that that structure has a, a tension ring at the bottom of it. And at the top, the half arches are coming and sitting on a compression ring. It is seen in the photograph. They come and sit on a compression ring. But of course, that's a very interesting structure. In that structure, if you look at it carefully, uh, there is also an internal structure which is hanging to the steel dome. And there are also ramps climbing uh, holding the half arches, climbing towards the top to a platform at the top. So a glass dome he is here represents democracy. And that platform puts people above parliament uh, to represent German demo new German democracy after uh, Hitler regime. And uh, uh, if you look at the top, Left, uh, you can see a geodesic dome. I cannot go into details of this, but uh, you can see it's a very geometric, uh, it has a very geometric texture formed by structural elements. These are icosahedrons, and these structures can span over 200 meters, and they are very light circular structures. Of course, they can sit on a square plan as well. So uh, on the Right side, bottom right, we have a grid shell. This is a new structure. When I was a student, this didn't exist, this type of structure. 
they don't exist. It's a grid shell. So again, there's a kind of uh, regular geometry, very lightweight structure, usually formed by positive and negative curves, and they can spawn up to 90 meters. Now, uh, again, I'm still talking about elementary compression structures, but now the elements are thrust elements rather than having uh, steel elements or timber elements. I have trusses or 3D trusses. And if that now what happens, I am bringing the first and the third solution together. So I have the positive form. I have also triangulation in it. So it becomes double, you know, double strength. And here I can go up over 200 meters easily. This is the Louisiana Superdome. So uh, the span increases in that way as well. So form and triangulation, positive form plus triangulation makes it even stronger. Now the surface structures. Now we are talking about, uh, these are usually uh, reinforced concrete surfaces. Uh, and I will first talk about thin shells. To be a thin shell, it has to be the best form. So this, this is all inspired from the moment diagram. It's, it has to be close to the best form. And there are other uh, implications of it as well, but I won't go, I cannot go into that. But on the left side, uh, there is, uh, this is Isler's thin shell very old, around 1910. It was built around 1910, very thin. So if you, you can imagine if the span is around 40 meters, the thickness is around five centimeters. And then uh, on the top right, you can see Calatrava's uh, hyperbolic paraboloid uh, pieces added to each other. So that you can feel how thin is the surface. And on the top left, uh, this is the one which has the longest span, 240 meters, C CNIT hole, uh, 240 meters. And <coughs> it's a reinforced concrete shell, but the surface is corrugated. That corrugation increases the strength. So it's a, this is not a simple form. This is a comp these are all very complex forms, parabolic forms. <coughs> usually. Now thick shells. We also have thick shells. So I don't want to use the best form. I want to have a different form, like in the case of Sydney Opera House or TVA Airport building. <coughs> then if I'm not using the form of the moment diagram, I can have a thicker surface, like in the Sydney Opera House. As you see, it's like a curved waffle slab which also has steel bracing in every cover of it. And TVA airport building, you can see uh, there are pieces of shells ed added to each other. <coughs> and uh, there are edge beams on the sides of it. So if you are interested in, we can go in uh, into further in some, any of these but it's a crowded presentation, so I'm going fast. This is Calatrava's uh, design, 2005. Now we shall see some newer examples. This is Moynihan Train Hall, 2021. Here, if you look at the top photograph, we have 2D trusses with a positive form, and on it, we have grid shell. So you can also see uh, the photo looking from the top. So this is one of the designs. This is another uh, new design, Jevel at Changi Airport. And uh, this is a challenging structure to understand, I must tell you. If you look, it's, it is a grid shell, but the form of it is uh, it's coming from the sides and coming down and it's not reaching the ground, it stops there. So uh, how can that be possible? If you look at the back side of it, you can see the three columns. And uh, somewhere before it turns downwards, uh, it has to have a kind of 
uh, ring option, I believe. I might be wrong, of course, but if there is a ring there to take the compression, then the rest can be hanging from that point and the ring option can be created within the grid shell. So this is a new airport building. You see the, the, the representative functions of structures in long span and high rise, of course, increases. We can also have timber positive uh, forms. So this is one of the examples. There is in all types, we have geodesic domes, we have domes with timber, and <clears throat> they can also span quite long distances. Now the second group, we completed talking about the positive forms. Now we shall start talking about the negative forms, tensile structures. Now here again, uh, we have two big problems. One of them is the horizontal force problem. If you look at the uh, mid top section, that structure there is Zagreb Arena, uh, Arena section. And here we have a cable structure. There are two main cables in it. There is a cable with a negative form at the top. And there's a cable with the positive form at the bottom. And they are connected to each other with cables again. This is not a truss. This is a cable structure pretensions cable structure. And as you see, those cables are applying horizontal forces to the points they are connected. Those horizontal forces have to be taken by some elements. And the second problem of these structures altogether is the wind instability problem. Now, as you see, as it is shown in this sec or above this section, the wind, if it comes from one direction, then it starts creating vortices over the building and that sucks the roof up. So uh, actually the reason of having the cable with positive form connected with those triangular cables is to avoid wind suction. Otherwise the uh, cable will be blown off. So uh, in these structures, we have to solve the horizontal force problem and wind instability problem. So now I'm going into the types of these structures. On the top left, you can see a kind of suspension structure designed by Calatrava. And on the left bottom, you can see a bicycle wheel structure, which is formed with cable trusses, compression ring, and tension ring. And these structures are flat structures. It can be used for inclined surfaces as well, uh, but they can span up to 90 meters. And under the Zagreb Arena at the middle, you can see cable trusses. These cable trusses can support vertical surfaces as well. Vertical, diagonal, horizontal surfaces can be formed by cable trusses. In a cable truss, we have in each of these cable trusses, we have a positively curved cable and a negatively curved cable, and they are connected to each other with struts working with compression and the spiders hold the surface, whether it is vertical or horizontal. And on the right side, again, we see a structure uh, which is, um, supported with cables as well. There is another structure, but cables are also involved uh, in this structure. So these are the strongest group actually, very long span structures exist in this category because they don't have the buckling problem. Now here in this slide, um, we completed talking about cable group and suspension group. Now we have also nomadic and membrane structures. On the top uh, right side, we have the membranes. We have two membranes there. On the top far right, you have a laboratory building, which has a membrane structure running between uh, curved 3D trusses. 
So again, as you see, there are different structures involved, but there is also, a, the surface is a membrane. It's a tensile surface. Membrane is a tensile surface. It's not elementary, these are surface structures. And on the middle part, what you see is bigo, and uh, it's on a jetty, actually, the structure. And in the sea, there is a part uh, from which the posts uh, are supported. And each post uh, holds an arch, a steel arch. And between these steel arches, we have the membrane surfaces. And there should be, of course, a few connections to the ground to avoid blowing off due to wind. So that's uh, an interesting structure. So you see it's the design can go into very interesting points and model making can help a lot uh, in design uh, of these structures. And on the, uh, on the left side, we can see nomadic structures. Fin Mechanica, these are also new structures, Fin Mechanica and Japanese pavilion. So these are air filled structures. These are like balloons. You can either pump air into them or you can have pillows full of air. And in Fin Mechanica, and I believe also in Japanese pavilion, there are secondary aluminum trusses in it. So the both structures work together to span up to 200 meters, that they can also span very long uh, distances. Membranes can span up to 80 meters. Uh, now, uh, negative curvature shells. Now, these are reinforced concrete surfaces, but they are negatively curved or they have subtle forms. Now, what is a subtle form? In a subtle form, we have negative curve and positive curve together. So if you look at the top left photograph, for example, there is negative curve in one direction, but in the other direction, there is positive curve. So uh, these are hyperbolic paraboloid forms actually, but these are also cable structures. In all these, for example, uh, in Raleigh Arena, which is uh, on the uh, left bottom, which spans around 100 meters, there are cables in two directions. There are cables in the negative, with negative form. These are the main cables. We also have cables with positive forms to avoid wind sucking, sucking the surface. And uh, these type of structures can span around 100 meters. Now, terminal for Barajas Airport is a kind of a combining compression and tensile structures. Now, these are very interesting structures. Uh, I will not talk on all of them. Um, on, the right, uh, on the right side, we see a kind of grid. This is the entrance to Lure Museum, designed mainly by Peter Rice, uh, the structure of it. There's a grid which is supported by cable trusses. And the cable trusses run in both directions so that it becomes a double hypothesis structure, very light. Now, I want to say a few words about the left bottom structure. I want to take your attention to the columns. Columns are supported by cables, cable trusses, so that they can be thinner. Now, the whole issue is to make it light, lighter. So the columns are lighter than they should be because of the cables. And then we have steel arches, which makes them uh, work with compression rather than moment. The steel arches are castellated. So that also makes them lighter. And each steel arch is hanged to the columns which decreases the span so that the structure can be lighter as further. You know, there's how many steps you see, making it lighter and lighter and lighter. This is a BMW building, I believe. And at the middle of the arch, 
there is a cable truss supporting the arch, which makes it further lighter. So as you see in how many steps the structure gets lighter and lighter. So these are interesting examples. And now we are going into the third category, uh, triangulation. Uh, we have, this is the truss family of structures, 2D trusses, 3D trusses, uh, space frames. So if you look at the right bottom side, there are some principles of using these uh, structures. And one of these principles is to load them from their joints only. And the axis of joints should meet at one point. So that those are the uh, some uh, characteristics of these uh, structures. On the right top, you can see uh, the 2D trusses of uh, Pompidou Center. There are also pipes running in it, but there are 2D trusses spanning the main distance. We have begin. We have begun with that building, so it's also here. And on the on the right top, you can see 3D truss example, which is Waterloo train station. It's a very interesting structure. 3D trusses are very lightweight structures and it is in the arch form, which makes it lighter. And at three points, we have hinges in this. One of the hinges is seen at the top, hinges a point, which is turnable. So we have hinges at the top and at the connection points of the uh, arches uh, to the supports so that when they turn, they make moment zero. So that also decreases moment. So you see there are three ways of decreasing moment in that building. And at the middle, uh, we see the Haydar Aliyev Cultural Center under, under construction, it's a space frame. When I was a student, we were asked to design rectangular flat space frames and it was not possible to make curves or anything like that. But as you see uh, now, it's possible. Uh, so with, uh, with 2D trusses, you can span up to 80 meters. With 3D trusses, approximately 600, 500 meters, as I told you. With space frames in buildings, it's around 100 meters. There's one example, 190 meters. And this is it. This is Beijing water cube. It spans around 190 meters, a very special space frame. There's a very nice video in internet about this building, how it was designed and how, how it was built and made possible. Because when it was designed, this was an impossible structure and it uh, initiated so many innovations. Uh, so the space frame itself is a very special space frame. The cover material, pneumatic cover material is also uh, innovated for this building. And this is Zagreb International Airport. Uh, so here you can see Again, a truss structure in a curved form. If you study the lower section on the left, you can see there are three columns, uh, columns in the tree form, I mean. And on it, this triangulated structure runs. And there is also another structure underneath it with smaller span. So the, many things are coming together to make a building. So this is an interesting example to understand these type of buildings. I mean, uh, there can be a long span structure running over the building and underneath that, they might be some other structures and they might not even uh, connect to each other somehow. So this is... Uh, an example in that way. And if you study the plan, you can see the places of those columns. And you can guess, uh, I think that plan on the top left corresponds to the section on the uh, right button. So that there are three curves sitting on those columns at the 
uh, long span part. Now, this is another uh, interesting truss uh, example uh, for sport scenarios. Uh, if you look at the uh, lower right uh, photograph, you can see that there are stripes in the project. And um, if you look at the top right, you can see how the trusses are placed in play with each other. So it's not, uh, these structures are not very regularly used. You know, if you put the trusses side by side regularly, you can achieve a factory building, of course, but if you want to have a kind of uh, spacious use of uh, structures, then uh, you, can, you can start playing with it. So you, the, the section of it can also be seen uh, on the left side. Kansai International Airport uh, is another interesting example, 3D truss example. So if you look at the right photograph, you can see that the 3D trusses are rather placed closer to each other, but they themselves span a long distance. <coughs> and if you look at the left side, you can see the cable trusses supporting the facade because if you have a long span vertical surface that has to be supported as well. And this is an interesting example. I found it recently, so I put it here. This is a kind of cover dome, but uh, it is uh, the cover surfaces are connected to the 3D trusses. And there can be a timber truss structures. So this is the Viking ship in Hamar, 96 meters of span with timber. And now we completed talking about these three, uh, three solutions to the long span problem, but there are also long span bending structures. Uh, so I want to say a few words on it. Now we have moment. Here we have moment. And one of these solutions is compound beams. Now, if you look at the left side, you can see Ms. van der Rohe's Kronhol. At that time, he designed uh, 40 meters of span with compound beams. And as you see, the compound beams are at the top of the building. So he used it, it's a chrome, you know, this is the compound beams make the chrome of the building. So that's why it is called the chrome hall. And uh, what is a compound beam? If you look at it carefully, you can see it's a kind of eye beam, but there are stiffeners connected to it. Uh, and another long span bending structure is a box girder it's used in bridges usually and uh, it can span up to 200 meters even we don't use them in buildings but why not and a box girder it can be steel it can be reinforced concrete and as you see in this photograph there are two box girders they have a box form and uh, there are specially designed profiles actually in the box form and there are stiffeners in them and they can be combinations of different I-beams as well. So uh, these are really very strong bending structures working with moment. Folded plates also work with uh, moment and they can span up to 50, 60 meters. Uh, folding um, each fold is like a deep beam. So it, they work with moments in that way. They are quite strong, they are quite light. They can be steel. On the right side, you can see a steel folded plate. There are elements, steel elements in it, and there is also a steel surface making the folded plate. Um, so that's another category. Now the cantilevers. Uh, we have talked till now 
uh, spans supported from two sides. But now we are going to talk about uh, structural elements which are supported only from one side, not from two sides. I'm not supporting from two sides. I'm supporting from one side only. So what can I do for long span cantilevers? Uh, if you concentrate on the left top photograph, uh, you can see uh, a steel thrust cantilever. And of course, uh, the place it is connected should be very strong because this is, uh, if this is my cantilever, this is trying to turn this in this direction. So this support here has to be quite thick and strong. Uh, and uh, the cantilever is made with trusses in the triangular form. And the lower surface is hanging from the triangular truss. And you can see the steel slabs uh, in them. Uh, one steel slab rests on uh, triangular truss surrounded by beams and there are secondary beams on it. And the other uh, steel slab is hanging from the triangular beam surrounded by beams and uh, formed by secondary uh, steel elements. And there can be different applications. Uh, so these are steel long span cantilevers. This is another example. So to give you an idea about the span of these, now this one, if you look at the section is around uh, 34 meters, 35 meters almost. So it is a truss cantilevering. But as you see, the support part is very strong and there is also a kind of bracing under it to decrease the span. So that's another uh, steel example. Now, these are the long span reinforced concrete cantilevers. One of them is the, the right side Ankara Tubitak building. The span of the cantilever is eight meters. And the others are stadiums. For cantilevers, if you are interested in cantilevers, study stadiums, because they are all cantilevers. And each cantilever is around 30 to 50 meters span. So you can see two examples here in, in that direction. Yeah, that's the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. I think it was a bombardment of structures for them. And uh, I believe the questions can arise when they start designing. Uh, and uh, when they start uh, imagining what they want, uh, I believe that when they start designing, I can ask uh, a few questions to help them uh, in design in, in terms of tectonics, actually. So will your design be a light building or heavy building? Or will it be a combination of it? So you can have some parts lighter, some parts heavier. So um, what type of materials what type of surfaces would you like to see? Uh, will it be, will it be, what, what will be the colors of those surfaces? So they determine the materials actually. So the, the first tectonic ideas are in that direction. And then, uh, and then you may also start thinking about, you may like to see certain details. You may like to see certain details, certain textures in your design. So these are the first um, ideas which appear uh, in tectonic design. Of course, the, the whole design is not tectonics. There are some other issues in it. You might like to hide tectonics, but uh, in any case, there will be a technology. In it. So, 
So if they have questions, uh, they may also, I don't know, I can leave my email address so they can ask their questions later if they wish when they start uh, having their designs more clear. Yoruldular. <gülüyor> Tamam. Bir öneride bulunabilirim. Eğer ne tür bir şey istedikleri netleştiğinde örnek e, bina bulsunlar. Çok iyi faydası. Örnek binalar hatta. Çok çok faydası olur. Evet. Zaten böyle bir şeyler çalışacaklar. Yani bir sistem içerisinde bir Çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Rica ederim. Ben çok teşekkür ederim. Kadar geniş bir konuyu bize çok o, o, o, o, e, temel prensipleriyle e, gördüğünüz hızlarla için. Çok çok mersi. Rica ederim. Ben size veda ediyorum o zaman. Sizi öğrencilerinizle baş başa bırakıyorum. Çok çok teşekkür ederim. Çok teşekkür İyi günler. Ederim. İyi bir dönem diliyorum hepinize. Teşekkürler.